Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. First up on today's show, Sal in Morristown, not Morristown, Morristown, North Jersey, sent a text message to Bloomers in the Garden, and he was asking where to find a pH test kit. Listen to what we had to say. In our second segment, Deborah called the hotline and had a question about controlling early cool season lawn weeds. We'll tell you what you can do to clean up the lawn. Many of us have dogs, and growing a lawn can have many pitfalls. Maureen sent us a text message and asked what to do about poo. (laughs) We'll help you out in our third segment. It's almost time to turn over that garden. What if you have weeds that have overwintered your garden? How can you control those weeds? We'll give you ideas what you can do in our fourth segment. The spring invasion is on. Ants, moles, voles, yeah. groundhogs, right, Julio? Yes, sir. They're not <laughs> bears. We'll tell you what you can do to prevent a takeover in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum succulent potting mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilum succulent potting mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. Ecopeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to fertile on peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Del Cab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. A proper pH is the best way to transfer nutrients from the soil to plant. Sal from Morristown sent us a text to the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Here's what he had to say. Good morning. I'm listening to you on 1250 AM. Great show, as always. My question is, what is a good pH soil tester meter to get the best reading? Thanks. Big Sal. Big Sal. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sal. Thanks, Sal. Uh, Julio, I mm-hmm. mean, there are companies that do test kits. Like, for instance, we have a pH test kit from Jonathan Green. It's your kind of like the mad scientist. we got to <laughs> do drops and different right. things. And and it works. It works well. Right. And it lasts for a long time. Now, Luster Leaf is another company that does it, and they actually have a meter that you can stick in the ground. But the homeowner version may not carry over right. from year to year. Right. I, I just right. I don't trust I don't trust it to be no, accurate, course. you know, to last right. ten years. Right. Um, and the test kits are cheap. I mean, yeah, they're they are ten probably, bucks yeah. maybe. Now the one he got was uh, the one that has the metal two two probes on it. Right, right. That's a and that's like a luster leaf. We'll do that. Mm-hmm. There's right. also. Um, it's a uh, rapid test rapid is test. another one that's yeah. like yeah, that. that one. And rapid test has been, they've, they've all been around a long time, yeah, but quite a while. Um, I kind of like the idea of the, the liquid though, because you yeah. know that the, you're getting a good reading mm-hmm. rather than always doubting whether the probes are still good. Right. So <laughs> I, I don't know, but best thing you gave him the best advice, mm-hmm. which right. was go down to your garden center and we will test it for you. Hopefully they have them where he lives. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, there are a lot of good garden centers uh and and he is in Morristown, North Jersey, uh not Moore's Town. So, uh he there are plenty of good garden centers there and that they probably do uh soil testing for free. The trick with getting a reading is don't bring 25 baggies of, you know, <laughs> of right. soil because though right. this one was on the left side of my house, this one was on the right. right. This one's for my garden, this one's for my land. Confuse them. You need to, if you're doing your lawn, you need to take about, you know, say two or three uh, soil samples from the front, throw them in the baggie, Mm -hmm. two or three from the back, Mm -hmm. one from the side, one from the other side, throw it in the same baggie, shake Mm -hmm. it all around, and you do the hokey pokey and you get your (laughs) pH test correct. That's right. Because you want an (laughs) average. Um, If you want to do your landscape beds, not a bad idea because you want it to be a little more acidic. And you want to do uh, your garden. So, you know, it, I mean, I had somebody come in one yeah. time with 10 different bags of soil uh, and wanted uh, me to test them all. Uh, and, you know, and it was all from their lawn. And I put them all in one bag and they were like, <gasps> you mixed what, did up? You, what did you do? <laughs> you're not going to spot treat yeah. each section no, with something not. that is going to change yeah. your pH. You want an average, basically. Yeah. And then you can treat based on that average because pH is not something that you generally never make it more acidic. You're always making it more alkaline. So that means adding dolomitic limestone, adding, um, say, like the Jonathan Green uh, product, Magical, uh, which is a great product. We like that very much because it adds a lot of um, different soil nutrients yep. besides just lowering the pH. So you get, uh, it's a good thing. Yep. It's good thing. Good. Raising, yep. the, raising the pH. Raising the pH. Raising the pH. Yeah, raising the pH. Yeah. And you, where, where do you want it? You want it at neutral. You want it about seven. Seven, yeah. So as close as you can get, like six, five is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, seven, five, that's fine. Six, two. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to go crazy making it exactly, exactly. neutral. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like a scientist. <laughs> and, and why yeah. did we say that it's the best way for soil to have a neutral pH is the best way to get your fertilizer to work. Yep. And why is that? It's because if your pH is too acidic, Julio, what happens? You throw fertilizer down and does your grass absorb it? No, it doesn't. It, why? What happens? Well, it can't grasp those nutrients down. You know, it can't grasp it. They get locked up. Yeah, it gets in there. They get locked stuck. up. Yep. 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 You know, so like just. 
it, it, it's it's like teasing teasing the grass plants to say, look, we've got food, but you can't have any <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> because your pH is screwed up. Yeah, how about that? You'll be amazed on how much of a difference it'll make in your lawn, garden, and landscape if you adjust your pH and you and are paying attention to pH. Very important. I think we talked about it last week and the week before. pH controls the way that your plant absorbs it, the nutrients from the soil. Yeah, it does. Enough said. Sal's on the right track. Yes, he is. He uh, loves his he loves his grass, by the way. Yeah, did, yeah. Did, and you talked to him, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And what? Uh, he have anything else to say? No, he says he spent he spends a lot of time on his grass. That's he, good. He loves it. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like a beautiful lawn. Yeah. There isn't it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he loves it. Grand. Yeah. Keep up yeah. the good work, Sal. Way to go, Sal. All right. We'll Thanks be right back right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Forcelotti Brothers, Rivervale, New Jersey. Calgo Gardens, Freehold, New Jersey. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len, he's Julio, and we're here to tell you how to grow a great lawn, garden, or landscape. But first up, Deborah called. She called the hotline, and she's got early spring weeds. You know, chickweed is probably the first one, white flower. There's some other weeds that you'll see in flower right now, and that flower means seed, seed means more weeds. So, what we need to do is how do we control them? You know what? Listen to what Deborah had to say. Yes. I would like to know if there's any kind of uh, 
fertilizer that you could use like now in the winter, maybe March or so, to put down on your lawn, like for chickweed and things like that? That's my question. Thank you. Very astute. Is, yeah. Very astute Very of much. her. Yeah. But here's the problem. You need to put down a crabgrass control now that prevents the weed. Crabgrass control does not kill anything. Everybody out there, they're putting that down. It's a preventer. It's a crabgrass preventer. Right, yeah. And that it prevents other grassy weeds, but it's not going to do anything for those weeds that you see. Just going to feed them, make them bigger. bigger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's what we do at Bloomers. Um, we tell people, put down their crabgrass control mm-hmm. and jokingly say, water it in with Weed Beater Ultra. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get into Weed Beater Ultra, let's talk about how a, like, in the June or so, you start thinking about putting down a dandelion control. It, those of you that are uh, like step programs, it would be step two. A weed and feed is another mm-hmm. word for it. But how those types of herbicides work that it has to stick to the leaf surface of the weed. All right, everybody, unless you're driving, put your hands out. Palms up. (laughs) (laughs) When you ride past your weeds with your spreader, those little granules have to stick to the pot, like to your palms of your hands, to the leaf surface. If they don't stick to the leaf surface, get blown off or it rains, it's not going to work. It has to stay on the surface of the leaf. For that matter, so do the liquids. But a liquid is going to do it because it gets sprayed on as opposed to having to have a granule balance there. So what you want to do, you want to use a liquid weed control to control those early overwintering evergreen weeds like plantain, like dandelions, like even um, clover, oxalis, which look the same, mm-hmm. and that, and, and especially chickweed. chickweed. Chickweed has a tiny leaf, little tiny leaf, and and I don't, I mean, could you, how many how many granules could you <laughs> fit on it? I don't think you could. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to spray. Now spray, and the best thing par- about this is this is a these are both monide products, and they're they our favorites. I personally like Weed Beater Ultra. And the reason is, is it can be used in cold weather. Yes, beautiful. 40 degrees, I think it is, or, yeah. or um, it, and it's still active. A lot of the other brands you can't use unless it's warmer, mm-hmm. you know? So, again, Weed Beater Ultra, it comes in like a, one of those trigger sprayers, like Windex bottle, Windex, yeah. or it comes in a concentrate that you put in a sprayer and you just spray your lawn. Yeah. Now... To me, again, it goes put down your crabgrass control. That's your preventer. You prevent grassy weeds and crabgrass from coming up. And again, because it's cold, that hasn't germinated yet. And then you put down Weed Beater Ultra. And if you prefer, there's chickweed, clover, and oxalis killer. They are different active ingredients, but they will work, and it will control those weeds that you see now. Again, if you put down a crabgrass control, you are never going to see it work because it'll prevent the weeds from coming up. The two products we're talking about, Weed Beater Ultra, Chickweed, Clover, and Oxalis, you'll see it kill the weeds that you have in your lawn. Mm -hmm. All right? I hope I made that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I understood it. Now, a beautiful thing is, is that as soon as this dries on your lawn, let it rain. You know, because oh, it's yeah. it's what they call rain fast, where it, it will not wash the chemical mm-hmm. off the weed, so you'll still get control. Mm-hmm. Most important, it it a few hours, a few hours. You put it down. Say you put it down eleven o'clock mm-hmm. by one o'clock, let it rain. So, again, you want it to completely dry, but it doesn't wash off once it's dried on. Now, when you're talking about 
cooler temperatures at 45. You're talking about soil temperature, correct? Um, ambient temperature. Ambient temperature. Yeah, so air temperature. Air temperature. Okay. Yep. Because with this, it doesn't. It's not about um, the soil temperature because you. It's all about making it work on an actively growing weed on the top of it. Right. right. And so again, it works in those cooler temperatures. Yeah. The tough thing about uh, the early weeds is like, for instance, clover can be a real pain. Sure. Now, Weed Beater Ultra, it's listed for clover. Now, I don't know, if I had more clover than chickweed that I needed to control, I probably would we use the chickweed, chickweed clover, clover and oxalis. More specific. Yeah, more specific. It's, um, you know, there are slight differences between the active ingredients, but right. they're both going to work mm -hmm. on the big ones like dandelions and right. plantain and mm -hmm. um but that's that's what i would do yeah. now you've used these right oh uh, no i haven't used that one no no i got joy oh yes yeah. that's, right. <laughs> that's right and i've always promised never to hold it against you i know you have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right yeah. yeah right we talk behind his back yeah we do uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway oh gosh but it is safe it is safe. Oh, it is for um, for zoysia. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, wow. It is. You always have to check that. Um, it, I've seen. I've walked outside, and, and we're in the beginning of, of March, and there are chickweed is blooming, and that oh, yeah. you'll see all those weeds blooming. Yeah. That now that you want to control, they are, they're there. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's dandelions like when you see the the bright yellow flower of a dandelion those are not flowers those are seeds mm -hmm. each spot where there's one of those and like how you know my kids were always taught don't blow those things <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens there oh it's so cute yeah, and it's right. like you know it's Hold like, it. yeah Hold um, it. what a pretty picture yeah, right. <laughs> like nice family nice little kid right yeah our kids yeah. get beat if they blew oh, them around. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to dad over there. Because what's happened is is that uh -huh. the weed seeds are being blown all, all around. Uh, not not really, okay? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You can come and meet Carl at Bloomers and ask him, <laughs> ask okay? Him, yeah. He is my youngest son. Right. No. Uh, it was discouraged, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but every single plant that has a flower. It's going to see. Oh, gosh. See, this is when we get into... The horticultural mud. <laughs> is that what they call it? Unless it's sterile, yeah. okay, that those are seeds ready to invade yeah. your yard, your landscape, your garden. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, anything to add, Julio? Well, you know, the seeds, seeds are always going to be there. You know, it, it's part of gardening. And I think, you know, people yeah. get a discouraged Birds. about it you know and oh i got this i got that you know, yeah. don't, don't worry about it you know it can be yeah. taken care of that's right we have we have the tools here for you you know yeah. we, we should, lunch has talked about it and uh they work beautifully your local so, garden center yeah. is a clearinghouse for information it is so it is. you know if, if if it's inconvenient for you to get to bloomers you know go to your neighborhood garden center there mm -hmm. they want to help yeah. you mm -hmm. and they want to see you succeed yeah and we have the inf all the information and what you know, what's it look like and you know, we'll, we'll go through all that. Yeah, bring a piece with you. Bring yeah, it. I've got to right. kill this, right. or I don't want yeah. this, or oh, yeah. or I do want it. Oh yeah. You know, there's a book out called Weeds, and uh, they should buy it to, to come in and say, hey, you know, I got this problem. <laughs> it makes, oh, you that know. kind of book. I yeah. thought it. You know. <laughs> no, it's got. You know, it is legal out. now in many states. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, all right. All right. <laughs> On that note, we got to take a break. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gasper's Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, 
PA. Smeltzer and Son Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mastardi Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Those of you with dogs, <laughs> that's right, we have one here. No, it can be difficult to raise a dog and a lawn at the same time. Maureen sent a text to the hotline asking what to do about poo. <laughs> Here's what she had to say in her text. Hi, I'm Maureen, and I'm in Union <laughs> County, New Jersey. I would like to know what I have to do to keep my semi-lawn healthy. I have a large dog, and all winter he's let out to the yard to do his stuff. (laughs) I pick up the waste as soon as possible, but can't water down the urine in the winter like I do when it's warmer. Any suggestions on how I can maintain just a decent lawn? Most of it is zoysia. Julio, you should answer this one, or you should get a dog. That's right. Most of it is zoysia grass, and in the urine areas is very weedy was zoysia. Uh, I also have a bird feeder, and that's located in the outskirts of the lawn, but no doubt drops weed seeds. Yes, it does. Thank you for your help. <laughs> wow. There that's you go. Right there. That's that oh is. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Man. Let's uh, let's let's unpack this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she, she's very good. I have three dogs. Yeah, you got three. I have a big yard. You do have a big yard. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You got some big dogs. Too. I do. I, I'm worried. I understand. Yeah. I will not go in my backyard. Mm-hmm. Send <laughs> no. my son Carl. We talked about him earlier. <laughs> That's right. Go find your dog and don't wear my shoes. <laughs> anyway, oh, gosh, it, it is. It is tough. It is tough. And and that what happens is that, like and you know what some people have said is like can I put dog waste in my compost pile no 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 no, no. that that is not a good idea okay do not do that um because urine is urea urea is straight nitrogen uh coming out of the whatever animal you choose (laughs) Uh, and true. and so what happens is it burns it burns the grass. Um, also, you mentioned the bird feeder. The bird feeder. Look, if you're buying good bird seed, okay, that they will eat everything that's there. Higher quantities of sunflower seeds, things like that. But if you're buying like the Sam's Club cheapo, wow! Well, I can't believe it's so cheap. It's filled with milo and millet, and they kick a lot of that seed to the side and don't eat it, and it ends up you have your own little farm underneath your bird feeder. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. buy better seed, yeah. and the and the best part about it is that they actually eat the bird seed you put in the feeder rather than yeah. kicking it out yeah. and and you know just saying like here here's some here's some weed seeds. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do? Let's uh, <laughs> let's take. Number one <laughs> thing at a time. <laughs> Get that, Julio? Yeah, I yeah. got you. <laughs> Number two we'll deal uh, with later. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, so mm, there's something that are, that's called dog rocks. Ooh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Never used it. Mm. I I have been told that it works. Yeah. I just, let me explain. Dog rocks are 100% natural. Australian product that can save your lawn from burn mar- burn marks that your dog's urine can cause. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, they are a pragmagnetic indigenous rock 
Can I can I can I say something about that? Igne- yeah, if you igneous. can say that word. Igneous. Igneous. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. All right. Excuse me. Can you read it? Well, I know how to, I know how to spell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> think of dog rocks as a sponge when placed in water, and it absorbs the impurities that cause urine to burn. So they filter out these impurities and. Tin, ammonia, there's a big one, nitrates, Mm -hmm. and that they're usually passed through the urine, and that's what kills the grass and and everything else. Now, so yes, it goes in the dog's water, and as they're drinking the water, it's like a water softener for your dog. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty much. (laughs) And Uh. that's something that, um, I've seen it at trade shows. I've walked right by it because it's like, uh, you know. But Maureen, this is something that you should try to find. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a good solution to a problem. Right, <laughs> do a search. I'm sure that they have a dealer locator on their website. Um, and again, it's called Dog Rocks. Mm-hmm. Now, for number two, mm-hmm. garden lime, putting down lime, it's an oxidizer, and that when it's put over, that it will help it to dry out, break down. My sisters had horses, and then you clean the horse stall, you'd coat it with with lime, and it would help dry everything up. And that's kind of what's you know would happen in your lawn. You can't do it every time, but uh, using using it at this time of the year because let's just say without getting too descriptive things are thawing out yes they are <laughs> <laughs> we've dealt with every topic on this show i think so we? yeah <laughs> yeah so again that's what i w- that's what yeah. i would recommend mm-hmm. um so for number one dog rocks number two use lime, use lime. yeah can, use- can i say something about the igneous part <laughs> You know, he just wants to show off. He really does. It, it's it's uh, solidified from lava, by the way. So so it's got that property, you know, from lava, from coming from the lava. I'm not letting my dog drink lava water. <laughs> this is a rock. It's a rock, but yeah. it's lava stone. No, it comes from the lava. It comes from. I the mean, lava. I've seen it. I mean, it looks like a a rock, not yeah. like lava rock, though. But that's where it, it comes from. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What else? What else you got? That, that's it. You know, that's all. He's been for... studying that word all night long. I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. So, I mean, I've seen this at again, like I said, at trade shows, and it was like, to be honest, uh-huh. I am an ignorant man because I thought you put the rocks on the pea spots. Oh, originally, yeah. It's like I'm not putting those stupid rocks. I'm not gonna go walk around my lawn every time my dog pees, put the rocks down on it. But now I get it. Yeah. Now there's a possibility. See, yeah. dog rocks need to hire better salesmen so they can get the word yeah. out. So, but uh, anyway, so it it yeah. I understand how it would work though. Sure. I understand how it works. Yeah, I think it's great. Right. It's so a good product again, uh, and. So the in the garden lime that's just been tried and true for forever. Just you know, be careful what type you use. Dolomitic limestone is a mineral that will not affect. You know, it's it's not dangerous. Yeah. But if you're using some of the garden lime, like that's fast acting, corrosive, like it'll say corrosive on it, that's lie, yeah. and that you know you just got to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. You you'd probably you could probably make a spray out of it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, garden lime. So number one, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Dog rocks. Number two, two. garden lime. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Anything to add, Julio? No, I think I talked about the rock already. You already <laughs> talked. You don't want to bring it up? Can you say it again? Say what the type of rock is again? It's an igneous rock. Igneous? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I go deeper about you know geology, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Did you know that uh, the Earth has three crusts? Yes. Yeah. Yes, pie crust. <laughs> well, I enjoy every one. You do? <laughs> well, that's another show. <laughs> so, all right, we are definitely going to break now. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 
609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back. So, Julio, what's the soil temperature, Dino? Yes, the five-week uh, soil temperature is 45 degrees. 45? Average. It's pretty cold because it's going to yeah. be warm later on this Oh, week. yeah. Anyway. As soil temperatures warm up, weeds begin to sprout and grow. Like, for instance, we were talking about uh, chickweed, and we are talking about some of the other ones that, are, right. that have germinated and are growing. You may have, in the fall, cleaned up your garden and turned it over, and now all of a sudden there's green things coming up. All, <laughs> they're, all, they're not <laughs> vegetables. Um, they're weeds. And what do you do? What do you do? Well, the first thing you said to me, you just bend down and pull them out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a little more lazy than that. <laughs> <laughs> so Julio can bend yeah. down and fill them out. <laughs> yeah, but right. uh, ultimately, I mean, that's what weeding is. And you uh-huh. said, like, it's just a part of gardening. Yeah, it is. Um, using a hoe. That's yeah. what a hoe is yeah. for. I you use that. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, there's a, oh God, too many years on the farm doing hoeing. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, but you use a hoe, and that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. And you pull that weed out and make sure that's that right. you turn the roots to the sky so it dries out. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to um, go the chemical route, you can use preen um, as a preventer, but to kill the existing weeds, you have to use something like Roundup. Now, there are a lot of organic, now, now get this, you want to talk about your rocks, <laughs> post-emergent herbicides. <laughs> oh, I got you. That's ten dollars. Yeah, right. Ten dollar word. <laughs> All right. Post post emergent means just after right. they emerged, mm-hmm. and it an herbicide that it kills it. Mm-hmm. Um. So <laughs> anyway, so what it does is is that I mean I think that they have now a lot of organic weed controls where it's usually like a type of. I mean, it's got acid in its name. It's it's usually um, 
also some oils that are working, like they're different oils for the organic ones, and they work. Yeah. But it's the question, do they work all the way down to the root? And if it's not working all the way down to the root, it's a waste of time. Waste of time and money. Mm -hmm. So, again, go to your local garden center. Tell them that you want to spray weed control in your garden that is not super toxic. Um, I still believe that Roundup is very safe. Um, But that's me, and maybe I've drank the Kool-Aid or the Roundup. (laughs) (laughs) I just believe that that, uh, glyphosate is the active ingredient. That it just is, it works. It's it works, safe, yeah. and, and and it's not something because of the way that it kills. It doesn't poison it. It doesn't poison the ground. Yeah, it like tricks the weed into thinking that it's not getting sunlight. Um, you just have to use it properly. I mean, yeah, you know, follow the directions. Yeah. Don't be a and, uh, yeah. Whistle. And and uh, you know, you, you use it you, when you need it. You use it. I mean, it's right. there. Right. I, right. I don't see anything wrong with it. Right. Now, so now that's that's. Post emergent. Post emergent, yeah. And then you need to follow it up with a pre emergent. Pre emergent. Yeah. Pre emergent. Just like crabgrass controls, a pre emergent controls the weed before it comes up. You want to use preen. preen yeah. And that will, prov- it's like a crabgrass control, prevents the weed from coming up. But you can't put down, people put down preen and they think that it's going to kill the existing weeds. Yeah. Nah, it doesn't work that way. To prevent or like you said. Right. If seeds in the soil and they germinate, it's going to stop that. Yeah, that's granular, right? Right. It's yeah. granular. Made, made out of uh, what? Cool corn gluten? No. That's, the, that's the organic the one. Organic one. Okay. I don't buy corn gluten. Yeah. I don't. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Some people have success with corn gluten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was on Maureen's lawn? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, look, I'm not going to get into the debate. You can call complaints. Julio Zamora, right. care of bloomers in the garden dot com. Uh, anyway, I I just not sold on the whole corn gluten thing. OK, uh, it, we, it's been around for years. Um, if it was effective, they'd be using it commercially. And they're not. Now, if you want, if you want to put something down that's organic as a weed preventer, that's about the only thing that's available. So I'll, I'll go that far. So if you want to stay organic, then use corn gluten. Okay, you know corn gluten, same. Th- you know it's in dog food. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Maureen's circular problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, um, <laughs> but preen definitely in your landscape beds, your perennial beds, your flower beds. Maybe not in your vegetable garden. It depends on how you feel. Um, I, I mean, I'm just trying to. Yeah, just pull it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pull it. Just bend over. Bend over. What to do is get rid of the membership at the gym. Yeah, okay, right. and just start bending over, yeah. picking weeds. You know, uh-huh. getting in that, mm-hmm. getting outside, yeah. getting in your landscape. You know, it's the best gym in the world. That's right. It's called therapy too. It is therapy. That's yeah. true. That the yoga's out too. Yeah, then. Really. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, now. Julio, you could right. you could have mm-hmm. a like yoga session in the garden I and could. lead that. You could. Well, you don't need a mat. I don't want yoga. Why not? I'm better at dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a dance. Uh, YouTube. We're available on YouTube, and if we can get Julio to dance, I would really love that. Uh, you so. watch. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll break out those seventy disco albums That's of yours. Right. Oh yeah. yeah, I've got those. <laughs> anyway. Again, the best way to control uh, your weeds is to, to pull them out, yeah. to use a hoe. You're gonna, and, and it's mechanically, you're going to get rid of those weeds. Um, once your plants start growing, especially in vegetables, you have to be careful that you don't cut the roots off of your vegetable plants. So you can't get too close to your plants. That's when you have to bend over and pull them out. Again, chemically, a combination of Roundup, which is glyphosate in that you know, Roundup is the Monsanto and that you're seeing all kinds of yeah. stuff on TV about lawsuits. Um, I, <laughs> not even going there. Yeah. Preen, absolutely, mm-hmm. weed preventer. Yeah. And again, Julio mentioned corn gluten as far as an organic option yeah. that I'm not too convinced it works. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's just me. That's just me. Again, send your hate mail to Julio maybe, Zamora, maybe, care of Bloomers in the Garden. Maybe. All right. We've got a break coming up. We'll be right back right after this.
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. We are back in the garden. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Yes, they are. Grease ants are coming. Moles are coming. Voles are coming. Groundhogs, skunks, rabbits, deer. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming to invade your yard, your home. I've already, I've already had it. The little tiny ants that come oh, in the kitchen. Do? Oh, they're the oh, worst. Piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 like I, I thought I got them last year. You did. No um, way. <laughs> but uh, we've got the solution for that. Ants can be tough. Oh, they are. Um, two things: perimeter, right mm-hmm. outside, outside around the the base of your foundation. You're going to use a. Again, this is going to be a long-lasting. Would you go with active ingredient, or actually say what the product is? I mean, the 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 product of our choice is is a bonide ant killer granules, and it is a permethrin. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a thrin. It's a thrin. Yeah. What's a thrin, Julio? It's a pyrethroid. Right, mm-hmm. which means it's a long-lasting chemical that was copied. from from a natural organic insecticide. So permethrin, right, uh, or pyrethrin, it breaks down with sunlight. So, yeah, it works great for the first hour or two. And then it's gone because the sunlight just breaks down the chemistry and it's gone. It goes away. So the organic version is good as long as you hit the insect that you're going after. So what happens? Scientists say, hey, we this is an excellent uh, chemistry. We can go and make this last longer. Then we'd really be talking, and that's what they did. Mm-hmm. So anything you see that with the last part of the active ingredient says thrin, delta methrin, permethrin, it is a synthetic pyrethroid. A, or <laughs> can't say that really. Yeah. Chemistry chemical. copied by man with a little boost to help it 
last longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's right? it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so again, I consider it safe. Okay, but it does last for about four weeks. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> right, and again, it's ant killer granules, mm-hmm. and you're looking for the active ingredient permethrin. Yeah. Okay. Delta methrin. So you're looking for a thrin on on the end of it. And you just go around the foundation of your house, and it's a granule. You go around the foundation of your house and sprinkle it around the entire foundation, and that will prevent any new nests from forming. But you may have some that have gotten through and that are actually maybe in the foundation, maybe they've got a colony somewhere else because you've got those little critters, you know, scurrying in, you know, and you see them. They're like little scouts oh, yeah. where all of a sudden there's, a, what's where did the ant come from, you yeah, know, and yeah. what happens, it comes up through the walls or by the garbage can or, or wherever, and that you want to treat it with an ant bait and that it's borax, you know, it's borax. 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 Like you know, I always remember, like, borax was <laughs> always in, like, cartoons, like Bugs Bunny <laughs> cartoons. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so borax, what it does is that the ant, the the soldier ant goes and takes a little bit, tastes it, eats it, said, wow, this is good. And as he's going back to share it with his buddies, oh, yeah. he leaves a pheromone trail of where he found it. That's how come, like, all of a sudden you have one ant, then you have 20. 20,000. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so yeah. what happens is now this ant, the soldier ant, it's like, oh, I've I'm got in. borax. It's great. Wait yeah. till you try it. Yeah, and, it. like, it's starting to erode his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know yet. <laughs> so he goes back to the family and yeah. sees sees everybody and says, here, take hey. a taste. Throws it up. The, the other ants eat it. Isn't that wonderful? And now they've got it. <laughs> <laughs> we like to share. Yeah. And then in the meantime, they go back. It's like, let's follow the pheromone trail. We're yeah. going to get exactly. And then the next group of soldier ants get it, and the okay. next group. And then by the time you've got to take some time and leave it there, don't be. I, I've had people where it's like, uh, I had it out, and there were like 30 or 40 ants. There used to be only <laughs> one. And that's a good thing. It is. Because what they're doing is they're bringing it back right. to the hive to kill the entire, yeah. the entire uh, nest. So, mm-hmm. again, it's liquid ant bait, easy to use. You just easy. leave it out, mm-hmm. and it's the best thing that I've found that oh, works yeah. inside. I yeah. mean, I've tried to spray and tried to Me put too. barriers into it. The, it the, work. the spray barriers just do not work the same way that this does. You just keep it out all the time, right. and, again, who knows where that where that nest I is. Know, I mean, yeah. you know, it could be like I have a dirt um, yeah. crawl space. Right. I, that's where I think it is. Could be. But uh, where, you know, they wander upstairs into yeah. the kitchen and say, oh, at. look, here's they the know, sugar. They know where those sweets are. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, right. again, liquid ant bait, yeah. you can hide it real easy. It's mm-hmm. nice and flat. Yeah. And that uh, that's what I would use. Yeah, I would use tarot. I use that one all the time. It, it always works. Yep, yeah. yep. It's a, it's a great product. Yeah, it is. Liquid ant bait for inside the kitchen or any, any room. All right, Julio, mm-hmm. what is the difference between a mole and a vole. A vole is a vegetarian, and a mole is a meat eater. So, moles are eating grubs in your yeah. garden, landscape, yeah. lawn. So then you walk out and you twist your ankle and you've got to go to the hospital. You can blame <laughs> the mole. The mole. <laughs> Darn mole. Oh, yeah. And if you're in the garden, the same thing happens. Yeah. You know, they're eating your. Your roots of your plant. So, hey, where'd that go? <laughs> uh, either way, they are a pest, yeah. and that you use repellents. There mm-hmm. are poisons. Yeah. There are poisons out there. Yeah. Now we don't want to get in trouble from anybody, but uh, <laughs> if you want a poison, go out go and ahead. get it because it's on the shelf. <laughs> it's on the shelf at Bloomers. <laughs> That's right. And I think it's twelve ninety nine. Anyway, Not bad. but uh, <laughs> we don't want to encourage that. Yeah. Unless you're really pissed off because you're so tired of yeah. putting the repellents down. That's right. I, uh, after a while, you say, hey. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. You know, everybody's organic until uh-huh. the stuff doesn't, doesn't work, work. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> give me the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's get rid of this thing. Anyway, same thing happens with repellents. It's like after a while, it's like, yeah. I want them dead. I want them dead. <laughs> right. I don't care. I want them dead. <laughs> they got to be out of here. <laughs> and that uh-huh. what's in a mole and vole repellent is castor oil. It's granulated castor oil, and you put it down, and it 
uh, messes with their food source and they get an upset stomach and they never want to come to no. your yard anymore to feed. <laughs> no. So that's the idea. Mm-hmm. So and it and it's pet safe. You know, just follow the directions. That's okay. Right. It <laughs> is. You know. It, it is a very good product. You just have to follow it. And you have to be consistent. You always have to follow it up, follow it up. Yeah. All right, Julio. Yeah, same well, thing. It repels all animal repellent. It gives animals, they smell it. They, they, and they say it all immediately gives them the flight response mm-hmm. that they want to take off and run. That's it. And works that way with deer, mm-hmm. with rabbits, and all different, mm-hmm. all different kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, you got to be consistent with it, too. Yeah, and, and don't put it down once. Dr. No. Armitage, the best thing. He oh, showed yeah. his video walking around. <laughs> yeah. He had it sitting in by the plants. So whenever <laughs> he walked in the garden, he'd grab the bottle. that had no label left. But he would <laughs> squirt it around, and yeah, then yeah. he'd put it down, and he's just that's how he did it. Yeah, how beautiful. Is that? Oh, man. We're running out of time, Julio. Brett oh, is going to be mad at us. Oh, all right, we got to go back to break. We'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Here we are, Julio. We Lots to learn on this oh, show, my goodness. huh? Goodness, yeah. Dog rocks. What's the name of that rock again? Igneous. Igneous. <laughs> so go and get your igneous rocks Rock. to yes. stop your dog's pee from staining your lawn. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, hey, next week join Julio and I here, right here that's at right. the same time, right mm-hmm. here, and we'll see you in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. <laughs>